Good morning, folks. We've got sunspots worthy of watching, updates on Mars and astronomical forcing, and we take a look back at a coring of the last 27,000 years, showing multiple cycles. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was quiet except for some pops around the limbs. The coronal hole is turning through, and its enhanced solar wind is expected at Earth tonight. But we also will be monitoring the new active region on the north. Others are confined and quieter, but this one has erupted over the last day and rolls in as a tag team. Not quite done with space weather yet, as the solar wind has calmed, perhaps a bit too much. We've got half a day of KP0 and growing, and these enhanced cosmic ray days are the most correlated space weather health effect point. Especially odd to see it outside of sunspot minimum when cosmic rays surge the most, but alas, it does happen within the active cycles of our star as well. Highest watch level is for cardiac and psychological patients already considered at high risk, and if it continues for a full day, it will be enhanced risk for everyone, not only for adverse health events, but for cognitive diminution and emotional instability. We're heading off to Mars next, where the evidence of water in the past steps up a notch to include areas of major runoff and flows. The scarps look like earthly scarps in some of the region, and they also came out with a sister work identifying organic molecules in some of the dune regions with curiosity. Up next, one of the major dark matter searches in existence. The paper is meant to be a review of their work and the experiments and the updates and a summary of what's happened, happening and expected to happen in the future. I'll summarize further for you. They still haven't found anything, like every other dark matter search. Up next, it's a paradigm I don't love, but which is fun while playing devil's advocate against a global warming parrot. Orbital forcing due to eccentricity means that abrupt climate shifts can be triggered, ones that take us from hot climate to rapid cold development. Again, not my favorite version on how this is going to happen, but another way that within the mainstream paradigm, you have to realize the future they paint for us is upside down and backwards. Last but not least, folks, they combined a number of dating techniques into one paper here and have managed to find evidence of every cycle event within the time frame of the study. They've got the Younger Dryas and Gothenburg disaster, showing up very well in the oxygen isotopes, only about a thousand years of variability. And some of those same marks also have another dip at 24,000 years ago, the Lake Mungo and last glacial maximum disaster. And down in the soil water stress index, we do have the Younger Dryas showing up big, Lake Mungo as the largest signature on the left side of the chart, half-cycle Helena Pauli event as the isolated spike 18,000 years ago, and look how well the NOAA event shows up in the soil water stress index data. Folks, that is the first time I have seen both of the last full and half-cycle events identifiable to that degree in one paper, and we march towards the next one. We greatly appreciate your support. We're watching that sunspot group on the north today. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.